It's that time yet again, Achievers, for your Easy Achievers Game Podcast for the week of October 1st. Technically, we would have been a little earlier at September 30th, but we did cross the midnight mark, so it is now mm-hmm. October 1st of 2021. I am one of your hosts, of course, Elijah, sitting digitally with me today. Alex, how are you? Hello. It's October 5th. It's October. It's beginning the spooky month, which I'm very excited mm-hmm. for. I, my wife is doing one of the spooky things where you watch something scary every day. So mm-hmm. I will be popping in and out with her on several mm-hmm. things. And I'm kind of excited for that. And also, um, one of my favorite uh, content creators, the Angry Video Game Nerd, is doing mm-hmm. the Cinemasker Monster Badness on his website, which is always very fun. He watches a movie every day of Halloween. That's always. Does he have a does he have, does he have a list of what movies he's watching, or is it a surprise each time? I believe it's a surprise each time. Um, okay. He has alluded to so this one's special this year. It's like um, a movie a day, okay, from a different country every day. So thirty one uh, different movies from different countries. Hmm. So like you know, of course, Spain, like anything. Like, you know, and that was pretty yeah, cool. He's going and he's, I, I, maybe I misheard, but I'm pretty sure he's going to these countries too. Of course, oh, he's probably cool. already went, but I mean, yeah. he's, you know, he has went to these countries to watch them, I think. Could, mm. could be wrong. I only watched the video once, but very excited for that. Um, Alex. Yes. I usually ask you a question at the beginning of every single show, but... Before we do that, I want some housekeeping. Mm -hmm. Now, I'm going to keep some houses really quick. Very quickly, remember, patreon.com slash ggachievers. You give us a dollar there. Cents a day. That's how you support us directly. That's how you keep the show going. Now, if you want to support us freely, that's very easily. You know the algorithm on YouTube and or podcast service that you're listening to every single Friday? Well, if you could do me a favor on that podcast service, you can either leave us a five-star review. That's going to help us in the algorithm that's going to spin us up to more people that's going to expand us that's a free way of doing it this just costs your time and we appreciate you or if you're listening on that beautiful beautiful youtube then you can go over to our page hit subscription and the bell next to that to be notified whenever we post of course every single friday and you can of course like and comment we answer every single comment of every single video regardless of a critique or maybe some sort of praise i answer every single one and so does alex now you might ask yourself, how do I get involved into the show? Well, patreon.com slash achievers. You can DM us there for direct access to the show, where it be a question, a comment, direct. or you just want to yell at us about some sort of opinion we have. Kingdom Hearts being the best game ever. That could be an opinion you didn't like, but it's true, so I'm sorry. But aside from all of these different things that you could have helped us for with like Patreon or YouTube or podcast service of your choice. I want to get into the show and how we start the show every single week. What do we do, Achievers? That's right. What have we been playing? Alex? Mm. What have you been playing? I mean... Is it bad that I can't remember? Mmm... I can because remember I've for been... you if you'd like. Now we're gonna talk about the nice thing, and then I'm gonna make fun of you for other stuff later. Mm, okay. Now the reason I want to talk can't about is because I've been hooked on a show. So. Of course, of course, you've been well. You've been busy. you got a life, Alex. Mm-hmm. Aside from life. me, where I don't, I don't have one of those. But you do. Okay. Now Halo Infinite had its flight over the weekend, and we've been playing that. Now, yes. achievers, we did tell you you're getting a video. You are. We are going to sum up all of our thoughts at the end of the flight. We felt it was going to be repetitive to do two videos on the kind of the same topic. So I'd rather do one fully polished video for you rather than two separate ones where it's kind of mumbo jumbo. So we play the Halo flight. We did the four v four arena mode over the weekend. I had a fan fantastic time playing halo infinite not that only did i was bomb dude oh my god Al- che- alex oh, popping off, alex dude. messed up he was really into the game and i didn't i messed up too i didn't tell him he should have clipped these he was capping heads and i mean he was cap- i was impressed i was over here uh, covering his six like the oh. military men say i was covering his six and i just hear 
bang and then on the kill screen crazy flip skater and then headshot icon with the <laughs> sniper i was like oh, oh. He's, and i just hear bam 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 like oh he was like i'm like hey got him got him he was like hey, calling like, oh, shots like babe ruth he, he, it was it was actually really impressive alex I, I, it was really cool too and i was running around just Dude, killing everyone um walking around if, now it's it feels so nice because the a quick a quick a quick like sneak peek for achievers yeah if you're gonna use the sniper it, you can aim in so much quicker now mm -hmm. imagine yes. the intervention of Modern warfare 2's quickness that's what it felt like to me mm -hmm. like it was so quick it was yes. oh, i loved it it is very fast now a difference in this game, though, is if you get shot, you do lose your zoom, which I think is very interesting. Instead of there being yeah. a flinch, if you take mm -hmm. any sort of damage while being zoomed in with a weapon, you do lose your zoom. Which yeah, I, I was getting like, pretty mad about that. I, yeah, like, yeah. I, I, you, I like that it's in the game, but like it aggravated me because I was literally trying to shoot this dude in front of me, and he kept shooting me, so I right. couldn't zoom in. Yeah. It, it, oh. it, I do think it's going to be frustrating. It is going to ruin some snipers out there because it's. I mean, it immediately kills. Um, not only your your thing, but your aim assist too. But mm -hmm. but yeah, I had a great time. Um, more thoughts mm -hmm. later. But the combat is Halo. The sh guns feel like Halo. The movement yep. feels like Halo. The equipment feels very Halo. Grenades, everything. It was almost like putting on an old pair of boots. You know, like they're mm -hmm. reliable and it's f and it feels like good. A, oh, I remember these. I yes. love these. Mm -hmm. And. I don't know. There's, I, I'm going to save the rest of my thoughts, but I can't wait for December. Man, I can't wait. Now, I alluded to we're going to talk about some of the series, and I'm going to make fun of you. Um, you spent a very good amount of your time playing what we call gamer score games. Now, <laughs> you got maybe 5,000 gamer score this. in the matter of two to three days. Um, Achiever, uh, he's been bitten by so, the bug again. Uh, he has lost himself into the gamer score game, and so I don't blame it's, him. It, it, it was it was almost ten thousand. It was almost ten thousand in a matter of a couple of days. I'm going to look, Achiever. You can't too. Oof, technically, we can't anymore because it's October. But if you could have looked, I'm sure it would have been around ten thousand for that month because it does tell you mm -hmm. how much you've made in that month. It's mm -hmm. reset now. That's that kind of sucks, but. It it would have told you, and you probably were close to ten thousand. So I remember when I started this, I was like at one hundred and seventy eight thousand. Yeah, and I was like, man, I was like, I really hope, like, I want to be able to hit two hundred thousand by the end of the year. But that was like, you know, I had, there's there's not enough games for that. But I was like, and then I follow these people uh, on YouTube called Achievement Land. Awesome people, like they they have so many things that pop up. Shout out to them. And then they had they should they have a a, 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 th a playlist saying uh, quick achievement or quick achievements or quick thousands or whatever I forget what it's called, and it's just a bunch of games that they do in a matter of a couple minutes mm. or this to show you in a couple minutes to be like oh it could take about you know to an hour it depends on what you which uh, how you're doing it right literally each I bought four or five games it was, it was about twenty bucks. Mm. And uh, I mean, don't forget Microsoft Rewards. You get all those points. You could just use that currency. That's what I did. Okay. So got all those games, played all those games. Some of them actually pretty fun. For example, I should give a shout out to the game 50 Years. It's a very strategy game. I think you'll like it. Because mm. it's, it's a very strategic type of, it's like, oh, you know, you got it. It's like very, it's very Civ. That's okay. what it felt like. It's okay. very Civ. That is but my love it's, language. Mm -hmm. It's very civ. Like you have to survive fifty years. So what it it would you know you gotta you gotta use your money to buy to buy people. Then you go to the next year. You gotta survive each year. And then there's, if you get attacked, you know you human gotta trafficking going. in this game. In a way, you mm -hmm. know, you buy knights, you, you buy, buy paladins, buy people, you, yeah. and then yeah, and then you know you buy certain things. It was fun. I mean, I'm not even done getting all the achievements for this game. I have 2,200 out of 4,000 for this game. Mm. I've beaten this game twice so far. <laughs> but I did it in the matter of maybe an hour, an hour and a half beating it twice. Because oh I knew God. exactly what I was doing. Yeah. Well, congrats. Uh, Achievers, um, I don't really have much else to tell you. I've been playing a lot of Destiny, like always. 
I just finished Life is Strange Wavelengths, which is the DLC for the video game, which is very nice. Our spoiler cast for Life is Strange uh, True Colors is out. If you do want to watch that, it was a fantastic game. I do recommend purchasing that. And Wavelengths was a very good time, too. Although, um, I won't say it's some of the better DLC that we've gotten. It is still pretty good. It was the design of the actual DLC I didn't love, although I love Steph so much, I kind of mm-hmm. overlook it. So if you did like the Steph character, I do recommend playing Wave Links. But again, there were some choices that I played throughout the DLC. I did kind of go like, eh, this isn't very fun. But again, I was experiencing mm-hmm. Steph's story, and I was having a good time. Oh, I'm at 190,000, by the way. I forgot my, my thought. Oh, 190,000. Very good. Yeah, so 12,000. You're very close. Mm-hmm, you very close. 12,000. Oh, my God. Yeah. Um, yeah, you're very close. All right, oh, Alex, okay. is that everything you've been playing? I mean, and you, I'm sure you've been playing Destiny. I've been playing Apex. Yeah, I mentioned that. You've been I, playing I Apex. just came, I, yeah, I came back on Apex. Cool. cool. We're done with that. Corrections. I have a correction, really a self-correction. Um, we were talking about the Quantic Dream Star Wars games last week. Now, we weren't, we were technically incorrect, not correct at the same time, you know, it, Mm-hmm. whatever it, so that dream the quantum dream game is quoted to be more action oriented and actually may have an open world we were coming at it where an actual quantum dream were out of being a very walking simulator type game this actually might be a straight on open world action game that's what it at least seems to be i'll be very shocked to see that especially from that studio i can't think yep. of ever getting an action game I'm trying to remember the games they've worked on other than Heavy Rain, Beyond Two Souls, and uh, Detroit. And the, the most recent one, but um, Detroit Become Human. I don't think they've ever made an action game. Now, I could be wrong about that. And I don't know who their recent hires on. They could have hired some people to help develop those two games, but them it being more action-oriented, it does let me head-scratching. Like, mm, you know... Will they be able to tra- transition well? I don't know. And we'll, we'll have to see. Detroit Become Human was a good game, although it did get kind of lost in its own sauce in a couple ways that it's found very interesting. Um, they did Sea of Solitude, uh, whoever likes that, and then Dustborn. I, I haven't mm, heard of Dustborn. I haven't heard of Dustborn. Sea of Solitude. Sea of Solitude is very much a kind of exper- like experience game, actually. Mm. Um, but that's all for the corrections. Again, if you hear anything, any from the corrections, DM us on Patreon. Uh, for guaranteed access, or if you tweet or leave a YouTube comment, we also add those. Um, and a quick rumor, not really a rumor, uh, but this is, I didn't want to put this in the stories because it would have took us five seconds to say this. Uh, the Grand Theft Auto, the Trilogy the Definitive Edition has been ranked in Korea. Um, uh, if you don't know what this is, this is the rating boards, the ESRB. This means it's being rated to be sold. These are never wrong. Games aren't rated and don't come out. So, uh, we now know for sure this is coming. And I do actually also have a report on this that I'm going to kind of stick here instead of having its own story. Um, it is due out in November, and the reveal will be any day now. Sweet. I can't wait to so, play Vice City all over again. Yeah, we are getting that very soon. Very soon. I cannot find my write-up, so I apologize, Achievers. But that is the basics of what it said. Uh, so thank you for your patience. But I'm very excited for the games too. I will guess I won't play them, or I won't play them much. I assume they are going to have like the same control schemes of the older games, which I don't love. So I imagine I'm going to pick gonna... this up, kind of look around, be like, oh, this is cool, and then immediately turn it back off. They're not going to do it if they have good achievements? Uh, they won't, but sure. I'll play a little bit of it. You're on the achievement train, aren't you? Mm-hmm. You're fiend. Oh, I mean, that's like the fourth game you asked I, me. Is like, would you play it for achievements? And I'm like, I, guess. I mean, I, I mean, I mean, I, and then I when mean, it look, when it bites, it look, bites. Look, I, look, I've look, been there. Look, look, look. You see, you, you look. You see our logo right there. You see, see that it. name above. You see that name above it. I do. I see that. It says achievers. You see, yeah. Okay. Okay. Then. Okay. I'm, you're uh, right. As long as you, you know, as long as you see it. You know what? That's a good point. Alex, mm. Blue Point's been acquired by PlayStation. Not surprisingly, but still huge. PlayStation today finally announced, and this is as of recording, the acquisition of Blue Point Studios, the highly acclaimed remake studio behind Shadow of the Colossus and Demon Souls remake, um, via the PlayStation blog. Quote: With each of its projects, Blue Point has raised the bar on console-defining visuals and gameplay, 
and the studio's vast expertise in world building and character creation will be a huge plus for future PlayStation Studios properties. Couple interesting a- notes. Okay, remakes, I'm sure. Uh, a couple interesting notes. So not only do they say their vast expertise in world building and character creation will be a huge plus for future PlayStation Studios properties. Hmm. Curious on why they're wording it that way. Um, I don't think I have the knowledge to, to really dig deep on what they're meaning with this. But also in the article, they also kind of hint that they're making original content. So I don't know if that means they're making a video game or if they're making original content for a game that's already out. They, they I assume it was worded so strangely that it has to mean they're still doing remakes, but it has original stuff in it. Maybe. I don't know. Very weird. But I won't be surprised if they're just continuing doing remakes. I will be very shocked if they go go ahead and make your own game because like i don't know do we want that do they want that if they want that i guess i want it but um i i like blue point being being the the remake studio it's very nice yeah. we don't have many yeah. of those and they i mean they've done really well i mean demon souls was so good demon souls was one of the better games of, mm-hmm. of those those last uh, few months because it was so fun mm-hmm. and the, i mean i remember playing that and just it's stopping we we're actually chatting over the yeah. PlayStation party, I just stopped and looked around. I was like, Alex, this is a gorgeous game. You're like, yeah, it is. It's it's just you you you're doing stuff. You're just not paying attention. But I just mm-hmm. stop and I look around. And you're like, oh my god, yep. like, this and game is sh- incredible. And then you get shot in the air on the back. And then some sort of zombie megalomaniac mm-hmm. ball thing eats you alive. So that's yep. kind of how yep. that yep. game goes. Yep. And then you're like, all right, time to run all the way back and collect my souls. I'm going to call an audible, Alex. I'm going to stick with PlayStation instead of going into this next Xbox story. Mm. So okay, okay. there may be a Twisted Metal revival coming. Now, this is according mm-hmm. to uh, Video Games Chronicle. And this is an article written um, by Andy Robinson over there. Now, his sources are telling him that a Twisted Metal revival is coming by the devs behind Destruction All-Stars Lucid Games. According to multiple sources, the title will be a free-to-play um, title partly because the actual Destruction All-Stars, if you remember, did get delayed three months from the launch of PlayStation and did actually come out on PlayStation Plus and then was very heavily discounted to like $20, mm-hmm. like less than a month after that. So I think they are looking for an easier entry in this title. Um, and then uh, even more compelling, and listeners of this show will note that this is something that I have said over and over again, this game is supposed to coincide with a TV series in 2023. And if you've been listening to us achievers, I have been constantly yelling at you. This is what Sony's doing now. They're going to start making a show. They make a show. Games. They're making a game. They make a show. The game's going with it. Whether it be the remake, when the Uncharted movie comes out, there's going to be an Uncharted remake to play. When the Last of Us TV shows come out, there's going to be a Last of Us 1 remake to play. When the Twisted Metal free to play game comes out, there's gonna uh, or vice versa, TV show starts. There's gonna be a free to play game to go. It's I weird th- because I wonder I think, how that even is gonna be because it's by the people who made Deadpool and Zombieland. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I, I will get into that in a second. Yes, uh, okay. Alex is mentioning, um, a British studio Lucid Games is the right pick, of course, because uh, they had, did make some titles with Project Gotham Racing. They have also worked on Need for Speed Hot Pursuit and Payback. And then this is from Variety from a while back. This is a live action adapt, uh, adaptation of PlayStation vehicular combat series. Will be an action comedy penned by R- Rhett Reese and Paul Wernick, the writers of Deadpool and Zombieland. Um, Avengers star Anthony Mackie is playing lead role. Um, and the actual description reads this. It will focus on an outsider tasked with delivering a mysterious package across a post-apocalyptic wasteland roamed by bandits and deadly vehicles, including the series trademark character Sweet Tooth, a psychotic clown who drives a modified ice cream truck. Um, and then there's a little bit more of a drama thing. We're going to get to that in a second. But first, very quickly, yeah, I wonder how the TV show is going to be. I don't... If you if you go to me right now and like, would you watch this? I go, no, I don't care about this. But... Maybe it does come out and be good. I don't know. If you got the Deadpool writers and Zombieland writers, I'm like, mm, maybe. Would you, would you be more inclined to watch it because of Anthony Mackie being in it? No. Not no. a big actor guy. I don't I, see something and go, oh, I know him. I should watch it. Maybe 
I would say maybe three actors I know I would be inclined yeah. to watch something because they're I in do it. that I'm not, with I'm certain not, actors not that I know guy. I like. Yeah. I'm just not a big actor guy. That's, that's with anybody. I, mm. m- maybe. No, I'm, I won't. No, I, I don't think I don't think so. No. But this is due out 2023. And of course, this is all rumors and speculations and sources. But uh, this just makes too much sense to me. I, when they will know for sure when we start seeing Last of Us and we start seeing the movie, uh, the uh, Uncharted movie, because uh, mm-hmm. the Uncharted movie should be first. Um, that terrible looking abomination will be first. You said movie? You said movie? The Uncharted movie? Oh, sorry. Sorry. I thought you, when you said Uncharted, my mind thought of Last of Us. That's why I was confused. But no, yeah, Uncharted, yeah, I gotcha. Alex. Alex Look, I had, I had Last of Us on my mind because they I can't they wait for that the, HBO show. They, well, they showed a screenshot of, of the back of them walking. I don't know if you saw that. I did. Yeah. I was like, cool. that's the, their backs. Yeah, that's that, yeah. very cool. I'll, honestly, I, don't know. I, was, I, was, I was looking at it and I was like, she doesn't have the right shirt on. Really? Yeah, I'll give you really that guy. say that? Oh my god. In my head, yes. <laughs> I'm always like, she has a jacket on. It's a shirt. It's uh, a, with, with a long sleeve on there. No, stop. But I know they're going to be, I know, they, I know it can't, it's not supposed to be exactly the same. So I was like, you know, yanking their chain. No. In a more drama related news, um, the notable former designer and director of Twisted Metal, David Jaffe, expressed some very interesting thoughts of this revival on his YouTube um, and this is what he said, quote, Let's put it here. Sony owes me nothing. Our relationship ended somewhere in late 2018. But I will say that emotionally, it feels shitty. If any of this is true, to not have been contacted at all. It pisses me off a little, but that's an emotional side of me talking. The truth of the matter is, look, they have a business to run. They're not thinking about me. And if they are, fuck it. I wouldn't change what I'm doing now, and I wouldn't change the way I'm doing. At the end of the day, I'm excited that Twisted Metal is getting in some form uh, or fashion. I will be there to play it. And if they ask me for help, of course, I'll be there. Um, and then he adds some very interesting I wanna, things. I want him to be like, say, fuck no. I, d- I know things. I know where the bodies are buried. Well, I know who pulled the trigger before uh, before they buried the bodies. There's a lot of expletives I won't bore you guys with. I'm not saying I'm going to give anything away. That's going to hurt people, but because I don't want to be a dick. But you should have called. You should have called. Now, this all sounds pretty rough on paper. If you read the video, it's a little more jovial. Um, but... He goes off, and I'm not going to read the rest of this because it's a bunch more of that stuff. But I thought it was interesting. David Jaffe is a very notable character with not only Twisted Metal, but he helped create God of War. And he's a crazy motherfucker, and I want to talk about him for a second. <laughs> that, dude's, that dude's like the... Um, I can't think of a, like a drama. A t- I don't know. We don't really have a games industry like... Uh, what's that guy's name? Howard Stern. He's almost like Howard Stern, where he just like talks shit about everybody. I feel like Howard Stern does that. I could be wrong. Maybe he doesn't. But you know, just the, just a guy who just says whatever is on his mind. I love that mm-hmm. games industry has someone like that. It's just he looks like a psycho and he just talks about whatever he wants to, and it's awesome. Funny. Alex, I think that's all about Twisted Metal. I um have no further comments. Mention what you'd like while I get the uh, next story prepped. Mm, what do I like about Twisted Metal? Or no, general? no, no. It's already over. I was asking if you okay, had any final thoughts. I don't thoughts. really want to talk about Twisted Metal anymore. No, I don't either. Take-Two has suggested some Game Pass numbers that could be interesting. Dear discussion at the Raps Digital event, The Grill 2021. That sounds like a made-up thing. That doesn't sound real at all. That sounds like a CW had to make a... Uh, what is your issue with CW? That's like, a, that's like if CW look, had to make a restaurant. Look, doesn't that sound look. like The Rap, The Grill? That sounds Look. like they had to make a a, a, a restaurant. Strauss, <laughs> Strauss Selnick, CEO of Take Two, and Phil Spencer, head of Xbox, may have inadvertently told some Game Pass subscription numbers. During this interview, Zonick said to Spencer, "Quote: You've got about 30 million subscribers, or something like that, um, right? Like basically hinting to Phil, like, is it like 30 million? Phil Spencer then very carefully goes, "Quote: The last public number we announced was 18 million." Uh, this was the number they gave in January of 2020 during an earnings call. Um, and uh, he, Vizonic then goes basically like, ah, it's more than that. <laughs> but, but he very offhandedly goes, now, you might want to go like, well, Zelnik is um, the CEO of Take-Two. That's a pretty big position. He would most likely know those numbers. So it's very interesting that he pulled $30 million 
out of somewhere. I'm going to bring in Jeff Grubb from VentureBeat here. Now, he's gone on the record in multiple ways, so I'm going to start with him. Jeff Grubb from VentureBeat has stated that this number is actually around 20 million, 21 million. Now, why not? Why hasn't this been said then, right? We've had a recent earnings call that they didn't mention at all, right? And why didn't Phil Spencer say it then, right? So there's a specific reason why that. Well, Jez Gordon recently said the number was 23 million, where it was actually around the 21 million mark. Uh, Microsoft heard this in their report, and they said, well, we can't say that number now because it seems like we'll lose subscribers if we say 21 million. It seems as Jez Gordon recently said that number was incorrect, and he did hear wrong. It was not 23 million. It was actually probably lower than that. But that did have to change Microsoft's actual statement of their numbers, so they had to go, uh, it's uh, more. Because if you remember in their most recent earning calls, they didn't even mention Game Pass. I think they said, uh, they said a word salad, like, we have seen more growth in Game Pass or something like that, and they didn't want investor panic. So almost the number one um, reason any company does anything is to avoid investor panic. Um, and also, this is something I've heard around the industry too. Apparently, the gold number for this service is around 50 million. That's apparently what they want to hit to be like a major success in their eyes. Alex. Game Pass, 20 million. That's nothing to shake at. Now, we do see substantial growth if that is true. From January, 18 million. You grew 3 million in a matter of a couple months. Do you think Game Pass continues to make the success maybe going into that 30 million mark by this time next year? What do you think? Yes. You do think so? You think they, yes. they gain 9 million in about a year? Yeah. Easily, especially with these new games coming out on mm. Game Pass. I did hear yep. um, Jeff Grubb also mention a couple other things. Apparently, Microsoft's got money to spend. And this is very complicated. It involves interest rates and it involves inflation and things like that. A bunch of unsexy things. But essentially what it means is they need to spend money and uh, they want to spend money. They have literal billions of dollars. So they have billions of dollars to spend into Game Pass. So I won't be shocked if we see a well, lot issue, of interesting games coming to Game Pass soon. Well, my issue is like, I'm not, I'm trying to, not trying to be the... Oh, the, the dick of this. Okay, but like, why do this? Why do people care about this number? I mean, like, if, if which they're number? doing there's a lot of numbers. The, which one? Like, like they're like, if it's eighteen million, yeah, okay. If it's thirty million, like, why? Like, why is it? A, why does it matter if if they have over a certain amount or not? To who? The investors like, or well, the general public? I or... guess the gen. I I am guessing the general public mm. because I, I'm seeing a lot of people are. Oh, the general public is freaking out about, about how many subscribers there are. I mean, I, I mean, yeah, well, I, I say hmm, that's an interesting point. Now, like, like, I, like for for me personally, like, I'm not saying I'm, I'm like cool. I mean, it is cool that they're getting that, but yeah. like, I don't really care. I mean, they're as long as I get the games and they're doing a fantastic job and they're earning profit. Cool, Alex, you're what's called a rational person. That's what that's mm. called. That's now, what most people online talking about numbers and. For some reason, people like to argue PlayStation, Xbox. I, I, I assume mm, that's what the, you're talking the about, the console the, wars the, that the war. have, have been raging since they've released the NES. You mean um, the Civil War? It's been, it's been the same thing. <laughs> um, so yeah, I, I, I think you're a reasonable person because most people look you. at the number and go, like, this is just a fun thing to know. Now, some people take yeah. this and use it as weapons. Um, mm. I know you don't mean the investors because obviously the investors want to know that's how they make money yeah but no, yeah, you yeah. mean the actual why does joe schmo care i don't mm -hmm. think joe schmo actually cares i think it's either you either you care in an interesting way like me i want to know the number because i just want to know the number it's cool mm -hmm. or you're using it in some weird console war way which for some reason twitter keeps showing me tweets about these things that's that's what I'm saying. Like, it's, it's, you know, it's just... Alex, you seen the topics thing on Twitter? It is the worst thing ever. They mm -hmm. keep showing me topics. Do you want to follow Xbox topic? No, it's all <laughs> terrible. Every time you show me a topic, it's always terrible. I don't. I I very meticulously, Alex, follow very specific people to ensure mm -hmm. my timeline is not terrible. Topics. Mm -hmm. Terrible. <laughs> now, 
Where was I? And it's sticking with uh, Xbox. Yeah. Phil Spencer did mention very quickly, um, and also another report. Series X and S will continue to be in shortage well into 2022, unfortunately. Um, he references parts, of course, as the issue. Quote, I think it's probably too isolated to talk about it as a chip problem. When I think about what does it mean to get the parts necessary to build a console today and then get it to the markets where the demand is, there are multiple kind of pinch points in that process. And I think regretfully it's going to be with us for months and months, definitely through the end of this cal- calendar year, excuse me, and into the next calendar year, end quote. So n- I think he's just, he's, you know, ripping the bandit off. I think everyone here knows. Mm-hmm. I think most achievers listening to this knows. It's going to be rough. If you're trying to buy one now, it's going to be rough. Yep. Now, hopefully you have figured something out. You got some notifications set up. You've bookmarked whatever. You got an account set up. I don't know. Mm-hmm. You got very... to hunt it for it. If you want one, you, you can't do. just walk in. You have to hunt for it. You now. do have to hunt. You do have to hunt. It's unfortunate, but it is easier than ever to do this. Mm-hmm. I will say oh, they sure. are lasting longer and longer. And also, if, 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 don't yell at me, good. if you want to, the um, secondary buyer's market, the third-party market, the private seller market, whatever you want to call that, is getting cheaper. Although you will still pay a premium, you at least don't have to worry about being on Walmart at 2 p.m. on a Tuesday to buy it. I think I the last time I looked at it, there were around seven to $800, which, again, mm-hmm. that sucks. But, you, you know, you won't have to worry about buying one. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I popped up on there just to see if the Halo one was on there, and it put in a made me and I accidentally clicked on the regular Series X, yeah, and it said like eight something. I'm like, oh my god, yeah, eight hundred bucks, yeah. Again, I, I I can't I would not because five hundred is already a lot for me, but I know there's plenty of people out there that have the money to to be like, yeah, I'll pay two hundred dollars to not have to worry about it, you know? Yeah, which I get it. Yeah. Now, this is an interesting one, Alex, and I want your opinion on if this is real or not. Now, developers yes. are making games for a 4K Nintendo system. Or are they? Over the, over the week, we've had a bit of a back and forth in regards to a possible new console from Nintendo. This alleged console would be a 4K compatible system, and a report from Bloomberg is to be believed. It states that 11 studios, including Zynga, which is very strange, Zynga Studios, um, which reports states they uh, spoke with actual employees there. All have 4K developer kits and are actively working on games for this alleged system. This report also goes on to mention that this system could be due out as early as late 2022. And in a hugely and even probably more interesting move by Nintendo, their own Japanese Twitter account tweets out the following, quote, a news report on September 30th, 2021, falsely claims that Nintendo is supplying tools to drive game development for a Nintendo Switch with 4K support. To ensure correct understanding among our investors and customers, we want to clarify this report is not true. We also want to restate that, as we announced in July, we have no plans for any new model other than Nintendo Switch OLED model, which will launch on October 8th, 2021. And oh, wow, that's next week. Quote. Yes, that is next week. Now, this mm. caused a stir, Alex, over Twitter, speculating if this is true, if this is not true, if the original report was incorrect, if Nintendo is lying, if blah, 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 blah. Will there be, is there currently, Alex, do you think, is there currently a Switch 4K system at Nintendo HQ right now? Are they actively developing one? I think that's a more interesting question, right? Um, actively working on and talking about, is that the same thing? Yes. Actively working? Is I actively, would say so, yeah. Okay, because in my mind, actively them, working on, I'm thinking like they, they already have what it's going to look like, what it is, and now they're, you know, prototyping it. it. Yeah, they're prototyping. In my mind, they probably have three or four models even, that they're going for. Honestly, I don't even feel like they have that yet. I feel like they're still brainstorming if they even should do this. I don't mm. think they're. I disagree, in a very specific way though. R and D at 
major publishing or major hardware manufacturers make a bunch of weird stuff. That's what R&D does. Yeah. I think there is, without a doubt, at mm. Switch headquarters, a 4K Switch. Now, is that ready to be made? Is that final product? Is it final stamped? Is it prototyped? That, I'm not sure. If I had to give you an answer right now, I think there is a 4K switch planned in the next two years. Mm. Two or three. mm, Two or three years. It is not coming out next year. I'm going to give it 2024. Because Nintendo loves doing this garbage. They they love releasing the the like successor to the successor to the successor. Mm-hmm. You guys remember three DS? You mean in Nintendo three DS XL and then new three DS XL? New three DS, new three DS XL, two DS, two DS XL, new two DS. Like when when does it stop? When does it stop? So Nintendo loves doing this. Let's not all pretend. Let's not all pretend like mm-hmm. Nintendo doesn't love rehashing the same hardware to us with slight now, improvements. They they it, made that a thing. They were the first to do something. it. When did Switch like Switch Lite? Switch Lite release uh, date. Yeah, let's see. I'll say 2019. I, that's pro- that's wrong. It's probably 2018. Yeah, no, 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 you're right. 2019. Yeah. yeah. Se- September 20, 2019 was a Switch Lite. So and then the regular Switch was 2017. 17 March March 3rd, 2017. I remember because it was my bachelor party day. Yeah, it was. <laughs> that was such a good day. Yeah, it was. <laughs> uh, so there's two years. So they're two years apart of each system. So if you're correct, 2023, at the end of the year, we might we ha- might have a next system. If they're Alex, making it every do, two years. Which do is we a have good... the, the successor to the Switch? Or do we have an upgraded Switch? Upgraded switch. There's no way they're gonna come out with another, or like a new, new like system. Like this yet. is like the Nintendo. Like 3DS to Switch? No, yeah. not yet. Okay. Not yet. No, no, no. Because when did the when did the? Let me see. Three like the original 3DS. Let me see when that came out. Oh, I don't remember. Let me see. I don't Release date. That. 3DS release. Ooh, close. 2011. Ah, damn it. You were close. I was close. I was close. Yeah, February 26, 2011 was the 3DS, the original one. That's, okay. That lasts six six years? That's six years. That's that's different, though, because that was a secondary system. The Switch is more of a Wii, really, right? So do you think we'd have to monitor their actual console life cycles? Because yeah, so let's say Wii versus the two till the Wii, Wii, Wii U was two thousand. So Wii was two thousand six. Six. Fuck. Then You're six. so close. One year off every time. Good job though. Yeah, and then, and then uh, Wii, U? Wii U wasn't that like twenty fucking eleven. You so, uh twenty twelve. Damn it! I keep doing it. I keep <laughs> yeah, second six, guessing myself. That, that's why. That's, hey, that's another six years. So You're a fan of six year life cycles, huh? Six years, yeah. So, so okay. 2017 was the start of the Switch. So, 2017, 18, 19, 20, 22, 20, 23, we would, if they go by what the, they would do, in, 20, in two years, we will have a whole new system. I don't think like that's out of the... I don't think it's out of the question. I do. And I also, don't... technically, they are not lying in this report. A news report falsely claims yeah. that Nintendo is supplying tools to drive game development for a Nintendo Switch with 4K with support. What if it's they're not, not a making Switch. a Switch? <laughs> like, it's not a Switch. That's yeah. what, that's yeah. what I, and I don't know the ins and outs of investor what is this, what if, what if instead, of, instead of Switch, it's called Pokemon Snap. Oh, not Pokemon Snap. It's Nintendo Snap. I was like, what? <laughs> snap. Nintendo Snap. <laughs> I, I'd buy it. I'd buy it. Yeah. I don't know. I, I it's not. Out, it's not at the realm of possibility for any of this. It's not. It's not. The, it's not. I, the more I, I see the dates, it, it adds it's, up. It's starting to. Add up. It's starting to add up. Twenty twenty three to twenty twenty four will definitely have another model of something. Either if it's a new system or a new switch. But also, there's... I'll just drop this in randomly. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, there is a PS five Pro and Xbox Series X Pro being developed. I heard that from. Mm. Uh, Moore's Law is dead on YouTube. Mm. Um, it's due out 
uh, late 2023. Okay, I was about to say, please don't tell me next year. No, it's not next year. Okay, I'll tell you, know, I'll tell you know the it. it was Moore's Laws on. It was a. Uh, it was a Patreon exclusive on Sacred Symbols, and it was mm-hmm. an, an interview. And he he uh, the question was, will there be iterative systems like the Pro? And he said, yes, it's going to be out 2023, uh, roughly. Um, and uh, he can't tell you uh, the people he knows. Who's he? Won't. Moore's Law is dead. That's his. That's his channel name. Gotcha. I don't. Got it, got I don't it, remember it. his actual name. I apologize. Got it, got, I, got I, I should know his name, but I don't. But that's his channel name. Um, he's like a really smart dude. Like he knows a lot about tech and stuff. But, mm-hmm. but I thought that was interesting. I just wanted to tell the achievers. I didn't want to. I. I was actually going to report on it. It felt weird reporting on a podcast of a a guy making a thing. So I. I didn't no, wait, I mean, so it is. It. There you go, achievers. That's a that's a freebie for me. Mm. You don't have to pay like whatever you have to pay to watch that episode. You might not even have to. It might be free now. I am meandering. Let's go on to the next one. Now, I'm sure this is a surprise to the achievers. Uh, the Tokyo Game Show for Xbox happened. We all, I didn't, I forgot. So here's some highlights. I forgot too. <laughs> Microsoft Phil Spencer um, had a bunch of uh, people out and they revealed that Xbox Cloud Gaming will be available in Japan, Mexico, Australia, and Brazil starting October 1st. So as of listening to this video, if you are any of those um, places, you can now play Cloud Gaming. Sweet. Sweet. And then this is a quote from me. It's an honor to support TGS <laughs> and our uh, Japanese partners. Um, this is a conversation with Shinji Mikami. We're working with Japanese publishers every single day to increase our lineup of Japanese games on Xbox. We know it's really important to fans and customers on Xbox. Give me Persona. Bill repeatedly has said this. He has said this for years now. I don't remember the last time um, he it's really put Japanese this before. Fan. Well, it was, I want to say about a year before Kingdom Hearts came to Xbox. That sounds mm-hmm. about right. Because I remember he made that statement. And I was mm-hmm. like, I'll believe it if Kingdom Hearts ever comes to Xbox. And it happened. It happened. So yeah. I believe him. Like, I, I think he records. really wants to not only open the Japan market because no one in, mm-hmm. X- in Japan buys Xboxes, literally yep. nobody. I think he wants to penetrate that market, and the only way you're going to mm-hmm. do that is figuring out what they want culturally. Mm-hmm. And also the Xbox, you're going to have to find... And the only way, I think, to really penetrate the Japanese market is a Series S, a small, compact system that you can use yeah. on... Not not even on the go. Like you can you can use it like and you can. They don't have a lot of space in like big places like Tokyo. And well, stuff, now so they have can, the cloud gaming, so yeah, like so, and they can use it on their phone, things like that. Mm-hmm. If you're gonna penetrate the market. Smaller the better, can, even better cloud gaming. Half the shit that I've seen that's in Japan that they do on like on the the subway stations on yep. the buses like with these texts. They got things. Vitas. They're so cool, dude. Oh, imagine imagine how much you want to bet. There's somebody out there in Japan right now. Probably is figuring out how to do the Xbox Cloud thing on a Vita. I want to like, talk with that guy. Like there's he sounds the cool. of, or girl or a there. I like Both. I've seen the crazy the craziest shit, dude. That I've seen. Uh, yeah, people, people will figure it do. out. People have cracked open yeah. the Vita too. It took them a long time, but they finally cracked that thing mm-hmm. open. Mm-hmm. Um, I apologize, achievers. I messed this up. Give me one second to find. Oh, no, no. No, this is correct. Uh, Tango Gameworks is developing a new game. Evil Within 2 director is leading this new game. Um, Phil Spencer talk, uh, talked further with Winky Me, expressing his hope for the future of a Japanese game, stating that his studio has actively sought to give um, young talent some chances, uh, yada, yada, yada. He has mentioned Kenji Kimura, director of upcoming Ghostwire Tokyo, and John Jonasa, director of Evil Within 2, um, is hard Honest. at work at a new game. Thank you. Um, and then a series of trailer highlighting some new games uh, coming to Game Pass. Um, they showed off Scarlet Nexus, AI, the Som- Somnium files, and Mighty Goose are playable as of today. So as of recording, you can go play those three games right now. And then they highlighted Back for Blood Forza. Blah, blah, blah. All right. And then um, Todd Howard came out and was like, uh, Starfield will have Japanese text and voices, which is pretty cool. Um, and then they said this is our largest translation ever with over 300 actors and 150,000 lines of dialogue. Holy crap. Um, and then there's some Asian indies that were shown off. Suri's The Good Life, 
has a exclusive Xbox demo that's out today. Um, and the full game comes out October 15th. A new trailer for Eternal Return. And that is coming to, uh, that comes out October 19th. And that was it for the Tokyo Game Show. Um, pretty light on breaking news, I would say, but yeah. very important to have these things because it is showing that they are working to try and get Japanese um, games into the Xbox system. I'm a huge JRPG fan, so I oh, for sure. will take it. I will take whatever. I mean, I was just checking out the AI, uh, the Somnium files, and yeah. it looks interesting. I do want to try it. I need to download it. Um, I even looked at it. And I was like, do I need to? I was like, no, I won't do that yet, but I, I should have. Alex. Yeah, no, I think I, I need to go back to Tales because uh, I need to get, play more of that. Alex, really quick. Mm. This is complete aside. Achievers, I know you don't mind because you like the long shows. <laughs> Tales of Vesperia. Is that one good? Vesperia? Yes. Is that one a good honestly, one or is that a bad I mean, one? I think, that's, I think that's a good one. Let me see. Tales of Vesperia. It's on Game sure. Pass and I downloaded it and I hope I was hoping it's a good one. Mm. Yes, it's a good one. That's the good one? Okay, cool. Uh, Z- I didn't like Zelia, yeah, Ve- right? Uh, Zesteria. Zesteria. Okay. Yeah. Um. Ves Vesperia was originally on the 360 and other systems, and it was this is the remaster. Yeah. Right. I yeah, downloaded yeah. that today, and I I want to play it. Yeah, that one's pretty. That one's pretty good. Um. Cool. Yeah. Z- Zesteria was the one that was that was I I didn't I didn't like it. Right. Apparently, and it was, it's weird because it says it was, I th- unless I read wrong, Achievers, let me know. I think it was like supposed to be like a prequel to Berseria, and it was really weird. Interesting. I don't know. How, yeah, I, usually I don't know if these connect or not. So, I don't know. Alex, hmm. you want to know what's sexier than Japanese games? That's going to that's gonna be hard. Patents. Mm. There's a recent patent followed by Sony. Maybe showing a competitor to Xbox is cloud gaming. This patent doesn't go into great detail, but it does show off a couple things. This patent shows how Sony plans to group multiple high-speed NVMe SSDs together and store the same information on them for the purpose of providing data at high speeds to a client device. It goes on to explain that it can use multiple SSDs to ensure stability if an SSD is overloaded or dead. So, this specific situation could be doing what xbox is doing with their service which is letting xbox one games play the series x games through cloud gaming or <laughs> if you have a series x you can play over the cloud blah blah, blah. this looks like what sony's doing at, at least if this patent's correct now we say this every time we bring up patents on the show patents mean absolutely nothing they mean nothing patent you patent things all the time to protect your trademark on an item or to protect the item uh uh, from case. from leaving you essentially like you're legally leaving you so you want to keep that so they literally patent i mean the, the famous uh example i always bring up is um if you remember alex the door shock f- four patent for two the, move for the, wands uh, that you broke in half you remember that that was a huge thing back, oh i remember back in i think um 20 I w- this would have been 2012 when we saw the patent for the ps4 controller and we thought that's how it was going to be it was going to be a, a, a door shock but two move ones, and you would break it in half, can, yeah. and you'd play it that way. And everyone was like, this is the PS4 controller. And I was like, I don't think it is. <laughs> I don't think it is, guys. And I, I, was, I couldn't believe I was right. Because uh, I mean, that would have been a, a nightmare. Is, is it a patent? Or like when, they had, when somebody can't make one for a while, like remember the touch bar? Nobody can make those controllers third-party-wise. And then they finally, they finally was able to like. Yeah, like that means they made one. Patent that if I remember, Achievers. Yeah. If you're legal, I'm not very legal, but I'm not very legal. That sounds terrible. <laughs> I, I do not know legal law very well or patents, but I'm pretty sure when you patent something, they have to come to you to make it. That means they have to either pay you to license the patent, or they make another arrangement like, oh yeah, you can use it. We get ten percent of all your sales, like stuff like mm-hmm. that. Yeah, because there's only ever been one third-party controller, and that was the the Astro one that I think. I don't know. I don't. Yeah, I don't. It's weird. I, yeah, I have no idea. Alex, mm. Netflix bought Night School Studios. Netflix, the popular movie and TV streaming service, has made their first official game studios purchase in Night School Studios. The devs behind Oxenfree and After Party, and of course, currently working on Oxenfree Two. 
This is a quick excerpt that I grabbed from their um, shareholder letters. Quote, we view gaming as another new content category for us, similar to our expansion in original films and animation and unscripted TV. End quote. There was a bunch of other um, obbly gobbly gobbly gush I don't think I want to bore the achievers with. But that specific sentence... I think is the most important sentence out of everything they've probably ever said about video games. We view gaming as another new content category for us. They are telling us gaming's coming to Netflix. Either you're gonna pay mm -hmm. in you're either gonna pay another fee. Another like, fee yep. to add it, or they're gonna do the thing that Netflix loves doing, which is add it and go in about a year ago, oh Netflix is increased in price. It's increasing price, yeah. yeah we made it three dollars more expensive. Mm -hmm. Um so yeah but yep. yeah i it's gonna happen it's happening they're gonna make new oh, content now are they gonna go the way of stadia <laughs> probably not probably who knows i have no idea but i do like competition and we're seeing this both in netflix and out amazon of, go ahead out of everybody i think i would trust netflix the most to do this out of the streaming services mm. now gaming is a lot different than movies because latency is a thing so. Yes, but I mean, I'm saying wise as content wise, like, mm. like I mean, like so far, Netflix is probably the best streaming service with content. I feel like like original content is what I'm saying. I probably wouldn't disagree. Yeah. So like I don't, I give them a little bit of trust on like, OK, I'll, I'll, let's see what you do. Uh, but with this whole gaming thing. Yeah, I, I'm a wait and see guy. Same with Stadia. When I saw Stadia, I was the kind of the first guy to be like. This doesn't look like it's going to succeed. I wouldn't. Let me back up some. Sorry. When I first saw Stadia, I was kind of skeptical. I was about to say. I was kind of skeptical. I wasn't the, wasn't I the remember first this guy. conversation. We looked at it, looked at each other. No. Yeah. <laughs> I was very much like, this looks like it's going to suck. Um, I mean. But. I want to, again, I want to say, I'll wait and see. Will Netflix do something cool? Cool. If they don't. Let's get off my back. I love competition. Cool. <laughs> the more studios want to get into this, the better. Amazon yeah. just made New World, which is apparently a giant MMO now, and everyone loves it. That's awesome. Yeah, apparently I it's see, good. Yeah, it looks really fun. I want to see more of that. I want to see more competition. I want to see more studios get into this. I do not want to see consolidation, which is probably what we're getting right now. Um, I actually want to do a show with you, Alex, maybe. I don't know. I have an idea for uh, an episode that okay. we sit down and we discuss acquisition acquisitions that's happened mm, um okay i didn't bring this up with the sony conversation but we can kind of maybe um kind of curve out the show with this sony has purchased like five studios in this year alone i believe nixus blue point um fire sprite uh what was the other studio i don't know They've they've purchased like five studios. They have, is, they have thirteen right now total. Yeah, or fourteen. I can't remember. Thirteen or fourteen. I want to be fourteen now, right? Because then it wasn't at thirteen before Blue Point. Not oh, yeah, 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 not, yeah, yeah. Not important. But there are constant reports saying not only is Nintendo, Xbox, and PlayStation looking for studios. Both Amazon and Netflix are also looking for studios. We're gonna probably mm. be seeing a seller's market, the likes we have never seen before. Um. This, of course, Every studio is going to be owned by someone. Uh, it, we're going to see major consolidation. I don't like it. I don't. I don't like when there's a, eventually Disney happens and like two people own everything. It's boring. Mm -hmm. But if yeah. we have more competitors in the market, that won't happen with the Amazons. With the I've, yeah. it's funny because I I just want to see them. You remember you remember Halloween? Like you get all your candy, you put it all in one big ass pile, and be like, hey. I want that one for your free. I'll, I'll give you this one for that one. I feel like they're just going to be in a big ass conference room and be like, "Hey, uh, I'll give you this. I'll give you this studio for this studio," and they're just going to go back at each like other. Trading cards. Mm -hmm. That sounds very dark and bleak. I hope that doesn't happen. I'm, I'm um, saying, I'm, yeah, I'm hoping it doesn't. But no, like, I, know, it's, I, know. It, I mean, but I mean, I, you know, I, I know. um, I very much. There are a lot of rumors right now that Xbox is buying a Bethesda level acquisition. That's all I'm going to say. So Who's left? If I had to guess, they might be either in talks to purchase Crystal Dynamics. Maybe they're flirting with Square Enix like, hey, maybe we borrow Crystal for a little while. 
because if you remember last week, we covered that they're helping co-develop um, the initiative's uh, Perfect Dark game. Maybe they're flirting with buying them and kind of doing a PlayStation thing where like they work with them to like develop a relationship. Anybody own them. Them. Yubi? I'm sorry. Sorry, I didn't mean to cut you no, off. No, you're fine. Does anybody own Yubi yet? Like Ubisoft. Any, Ubisoft is owned by uh, the the Guillemots. That is uh, Yves Guillemot, the Guillemot mm-hmm. family. Uh, you, basically, Ubisoft is very is a publicly traded company, meaning a lot of people own it. I don't um, know why, but Ubisoft it comes to my mind. That would be very and, hard to buy. And I don't know why, but Sega is coming to my mind. For Sega some is an easy buy, I think. From uh, uh, Sega is an easy buy. I think Sega is like something like I think you could very much go up to and be like, "We're buying you." Yeah, I that's not out of the realm. Ubisoft, I don't think will happen because it's very complicated. Um, okay. you have to not you have to buy enough shares to own the company, meaning you have to own fifty one percent of shares. You can go okay. to Yves Gilmont for that. Mm-hmm. I, that's that gets a little weird. That like you guys you'll probably mm-hmm. have to spend a lot of money. That's probably not worth it. Although they did spend billions of dollars on bethesda which is kind of crazy so maybe and, they want to spend that much i don't think they want ubisoft to like do they like at the end of the day like do is ubisoft really like that good is it weird well no because ea play is part of game pass but yeah microsoft no. doesn't own no. ea though no. they don't own ea no. could it be ea mm, i hope not i hopefully mm. No, I mean they have EA Play con- partnered with it already. They have partnered together. I, I, it, it would that, be like you know we're already halfway. Might as well go all the way. Might as well go all the way. Not <laughs> times I've heard that since. Yeah. Um, but the so EA is another one where I could be like I could see it happening, but I don't think Xbox wants to have another Bethesda situation where they kind of look like dicks buying the studio i mean they literally they're buying another bethesda level uh, so they have to take the the, the i mean the what is it called the th- if they the buy i mean ea is one of the ones where like your dick's out like it's like what are you gonna do now we have madden fifa I I don't think that's gonna happen. I, I, that, that'd, be, that'd be nuts. It would be. I don't think it's gonna happen. Imagine, I don't. Again, oh my God. really quickly, I don't want mm. any of this to happen. I want Xbox to make new studios. Please make new studios. You've made one. You've made the initiative in like ten years. Stop buying studios all the time. That's beside the point. Um. Yeah. I what what I want. I'm going to put this in quotes. What makes the most sense? Either you... Um, uh, I think they're flirting with maybe buying Avalanche with the Contraband. Ooh. I think they might be flirting with trying to make a deal with AT&T to buy uh, their studio arms um, to get okay. WB Montreal, to get um, Rocksteady. Oh, yeah. Get, I, I wouldn't be oh, shocked. I've been saying that since before Bethesda, although... Obviously, I was wrong. I thought the I, I knew they were going to make a big purchase just because they were closing everything. It looks like they were making a big. I don't. I think I was reading the tea leaves incorrectly. But achievers that been with us a while, I was saying they were going to buy someone big. I thought it was going to be WB. Well, I was wrong. It was Bethesda. I never would have guessed that in a million. Hear me years. out. They need to. They need to buy a rock study, and then Xbox needs to be like, let's just go ahead and do it. Because we had a Superman Returns game, that oh was, you know, <laughs> let's, let's, let's let's make an Arkham type game for Superman and finally give people what they want. Give them what they want. Just no. give them what they want. Just a Superman game instead of being a Suicide Squad that's gonna fucking kill fucking Superman or try to at least kill the Justice League. I'm very excited yeah. for that game. We'll, no, we'll yeah, be seeing man, that. I am actually excited we'll for We'll be seeing that at the Fan Dome, Alex. The Fan yeah, Dome. No, you ready for that? I'm actually. Ex- yeah, the Fan Dome. Fan Dome, Alex. No. Yeah, I'm excited for that too. We've talked a lot about acquisitions. I, I think we've talked this into the bed. Although, again, I love talking about this. Achievers, if you have any questions, I really want to talk about acquisitions. I think it's very mm-hmm. interesting. And what again, studios do you think? Again, I don't want the end game okay. monopoly when you have seven properties and all the properties are bought up well, and you can't buy houses anymore because you'll have all the houses. 
I don't want that scenario. Look, so. Disney uh, Disney owns pretty much everything for the so for the TV media. There needs to be somebody for the game media. Okay. Mm, true. True. Of course. All right. I think we talked enough about acquisitions. Although I could talk about it literally all day. Let's move on to games with gold for October twenty twenty one. Games with gold. Arrow. Arrow. Ho- Hoover. Like the CW show. Yes. Arrow. Castlevania Harmony of Despair and Resident Evil Code Veronica X. Alex, do me a favor. Mm. Mm. Apologies, Achievers, for this. Can you look up the dates for those? I did not grab the dates. Apologies, Achievers. While you do that, the PlayStation Plush lineup goes as follows for October. Hell Let Loose, PGA Tour 2K21, and Mortal Kombat X. Hell Let Loose will be your PS5 game of the month. And then while Alex keeps continues to grab right. those, a couple date updates. Thursday, December 9th, has been announced the Game Awards. The Game Awards will be this the Thursday, December Awards. 9th. Get ready to be awarded. Battlefield I, Spade will am be... Am I going to watch it? Because it's literally two days after Halo. I'm going to be too busy with Halo. I'll be playing Halo, but listening to this. Mm-hmm. I'll be playing Halo, but listening to the game. Look, that, if I could, I'd snap the Game Awards on my Xbox as I'm playing, but I can't do that. Phil? I know you watch the show. Bring it, Figure snapback. it out. Oh my god! If Figure an Xbox War, if out. an OG Xbox One could snap, why can't this snap? I hope like, Phil's like stop. Just Out of leave me all the things snap. you want on Xbox, you want snap. <laughs> you <laughs> said picture and picture was coming. You look, lied to my give, face. Look, at least give me something and steal PlayStation's idea of letting letting me see what my best friend is playing when I don't want to play. That's actually a really moment. cool thing that PlayStation does that I'm nobody like, talks about. That is like I give them props, dude. Like, you could that just was a you cool could just thing. share your screen. That's like, remember, fucking cool. You and I were playing Demon Souls, and I were like, I'm stuck. Bloodborne. I was like, hey, well, Bloodborne. I'm sorry, yeah. And we were like, hey, where do I go here? I'm right here, and you were like, we were both looking at each other's screen. It's oh, really it cool. So fun, it is dude. really cool. I, I, like, I'm sure no one uses it, but it's so cool. Uh, um, we use it all the time. <laughs> uh, Battlefield Beta, October 8th and 9th, early access, 6th and the 7th of October to pre orders and EA access members. Mm. Did you get the dates, Alex? Yes, I, yes, I did. Please go ahead. The Arrow is October 1st to the 31st. You can get that. Hover is October 16th to November 15th. Castlevania Harmony of Despair is October 1st to the 15th. Resident Evil Code Veronica X, October 16th to the 31st. And those last two are 360 games. Right? Correct. That's so. Cool. Let's talk about some Game Pass games. Now, we covered some of these, but I want to fully cover all of them because it was a big, giant bonanza of Game Pass games. So, I'm going to say some that I've already said, but I want a full list of everything coming out today. So, AI, Somnium Files, Scarlet Nexus, Mighty Goose, Astria Ascending, which I'm going to be playing so very excited. soon. Unsighted on Game Pass. Marvel's Avengers on Xbox Game Pass PC console, and I believe Cloud. Excuse me. And Phoenix Points, Xbox Game Console and Cloud. I think it's, oh, sorry. Just console. I'm pretty sure. That's what I have written down anyway. And that's all the Game Pass games coming. Very big Game Pass day. <clears throat> Marvel's Avengers, Scarlet Nexus. Play Scarlet Nexus. Very good game. Very anime mm-hmm. though. So if you're not, yeah, you know, it's very anime. But if you like that stuff, go check it out. AA Somnium follows. Alex has intrigued me. I might try this out. Astr- Astria Ascending. I'm definitely playing. Sure, definitely sure. playing that game. So I'm guaranteed on that one. At anything on that mm-hmm. list, Alex? Mm, Astria's is any for sure. Um, and I'm surprisingly going to go back to Avengers just so I can get the achievements because I'm in that mode. So are you, are you going to just play the, are you going to mainline the like story? First. And then I'll first of course, what? Do for, like you'll uh, do I'm that first. Do the, oh, yes. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I'm going to do that first. And then if I'm still feeling it, I'll go into the DLCs. Okay. There's only like one. What I want to try is one of these PlayStation Plus games for this month. Which one? Hell Let Loose. I don't even know what this game is. Achievers, we're it, doing um, we're doing a school trip. We're doing okay. a field trip. We're gonna figure I out what this game is. I can give you a brief is. description for it as you look that up. Please. 
Hell Let Loose is a World War II multiplayer game featuring 50 v 50 matches that combine shooting elements with an RTS inspired meta. There are 14 soldier classes to choose from and a variety of weapons, vehicles, and equipments to use on the battlefield. And it's a PS5 game. That is a PS5 game for the month. Because you also get a PGA Tour 2K21, PS4 game, and then Mortal Kombat X for a PS4 game. So you get those three games for PS Plus this month. But yeah, Hell Let Loose is, sounded interesting, and I was like, 50 v 50, interesting. Which, I mean, of course, a battery is 100, but I, so, like, you know, 50 v 50 sounds a lot, but... I mean, what, is it, isn't Battlefield is, like, 70 or 60 v... Or something similar to that? I feel like there's, like, 30 v 30, maybe. maybe I'm uh, yeah, I think it gets to 30. I, or, yeah, because, like, like, like... Mm. Fortnite, when they, you do Team Rumble, how many people is it per team? Is it per team? 30? Is it per 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 team? I can't remember. In which, which one? Team Rumble. Team Rumble. How many people is it in each team? Oh, in Fortnite. Uh, yeah, yeah, in Fortnite. 50 v 50. Is it 50? 100 is it total 50 people. Team? Yeah. Okay, okay. Okay, so it is. So we have had that before. Apologies, Chiefers. I was really trying to get this. There we go. Sorry, guys. You're fine. I mean, I'm. I'm I'm keeping it talking. You are. Thank you. There we go. So this, so this is what Hell Let Loose looks like. Sorry, audio listeners. Picture any single like World War II game. That's what it looks like. It, it, it looks. It doesn't look at all unique. No offense. Oh, this is getting captured from Karma Cut on YouTube. Just in case. It's bad that I don't say his name. I don't know. I couldn't find like a trailer for the game. So I, this is just a guy playing it. I found a trailer, but it doesn't show me any gameplay. Yeah. Uh, so. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. It oh, looks like a World War II shooter. Okay. I mean, to be honest, it doesn't look good. It looks like just like an old Battlefield game, but like, yeah. not good. Recoil on this thing. My God. <laughs> yeah. That's a no from me. Yeah. No. I just I always want to try the PS5 no, 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 yeah. just because they're of newer course. games. No, no, no. I, I, no, I, it piqued my interest as well, and I'm glad we're talking about this. Um, well, I was my, curious on what the game was. but This is a whole other topic, and we can get into this or not, depending so, on how much time we have left. I wanted to see how many... Let me, let me, I'm not saying they're crappy, but the very, very extra niche titles they they they'll release on this new generation is uh, for this uh, of games as they did before so like you know like in ps4 like they always had like so many like like these random ass games or like for example like the switch like you know the the eShop is just loaded with just random ass like yeah. garbage yeah again yeah xbox playstation they just have yeah, random I, releases yeah. every tuesday so i'm want i want to see to what extent, like, if they're going to try to limit that with this, uh, like, or has that even been an issue, like, that, that's been talked about? It's like, oh, yeah, no, there's too much, you know, we got to tone it down. You bring up an interesting point that not many people argue, which is content moderation on these platforms, yeah. right? Like, should like, Hell It Loose, it sounded interesting, but, like, is it really, like, is, is it, or is it a good game, or is it one of those, like, eh, is it just one of those added games on there? Yeah, no, you bring, I mean, yeah, I think you bring up a really good point. This is a, I think, a very interesting point, a topic that no one talks about, which is should Xbox, PlayStation, insert whoever you want selling a game, Steam, moderate their content? Yeah. I don't know the answer to that. Should we basically gatekeep based on quality, which could be subjective? Now, I think there is objectively bad video games. Yeah. We can look no further than... Life of Black Tiger, whatever that game was called, that was like everyone brought up as a thing like, look how bad this game is. Or, I mean, yeah, yeah. like, there's a lot of terrible games. Should we be judging that? I don't know. I, I don't. That's I don't my know. thing. Like, now, I, like, I don't like to be the one to judge it, but I mean, like, it's on me. Then know. these are their platforms. I don't care. I don't look at their platform to buy things. I make the judgment myself. I think yeah. anyone going to the PlayStation Store to try and think of what's good is in a big amount of trouble. Which is actually unfortunate because that does mean you do kind of need an emissary to know what you're going to buy. Like right now, Alex, if you walked up to 
let's say you have a friend named Jim. And that friend does not listen to IGN. He does not listen to the Easy Achievers Game podcast that posts every single Friday on youtube.com slash Easy Achievers or podcast service of your choice. He doesn't go to insert gaming place. He just goes on a PlayStation store, looks at that recent games. He has no way of knowing if any of those games are good at all. He has no Google. idea. Now, Google exists. You can argue that. Like, look up the game. But it does yeah. kind of suck that you do need a middleman to yeah. tell you should you buy this game. I think it brings up a very fun and interesting topic, again, that I never see anyone talk about, which is should there be some sort of PlayStation Studio I- board mm-hmm. that says maybe they still let anyone release on their platform, but they have to have a seal of approval. This is actually what Nintendo did back when the uh, video game sales uh had the giant crash of um of 89 video game crash of 89 i think is what it was i don't remember sorry achievers that might be wrong but basically it was a giant crash of anyone could make a video game anyone could develop a game yeah. so everyone made a video game quaker oats made a video game and put it in their oatmeals i think or some garbage like that it, like literally anyone was making games so nintendo no. said well we can't stop them from making games but what we can do is put a little sticker on the box that says Nintendo seal of approval. They have to come to us. They have to show us the game. They have to pitch us on it. And we'll put that little seal. And that tells the consumer this is something that is not complete garbage. Now, I don't know if it is a thing. I, can't, I haven't really seen it. Would you want some type of section that would, like, so let's say you're looking for a game. If that, um, Mr. Jimbo looking for a game and he was yeah. like well I, you know i want to see what they like what's the best rated ones mm. so there'll be a category versus one star to five stars i want to yeah. see the f- i want to see the four stars and see what's in that would you want that or is that there already that's there already although it's broken because no one there is no Nobody rates well or... there's no well there's no moderation on okay. the rating system right now i can go um i can go rate Far Cry 6. That's true. You might ask yourself, it's not out yet. Why can I rate it? Exactly. I can also rate it w- without buying it. That doesn't make you know, any they should be, fucking they should let sense. You, they should let you rate it if you've either bought in the game or beaten the game. I think, you, I think a, a good way to have a rating system is incentivization. Microsoft Reward already exists. Incentivize people that have beaten the game First off, yeah. lock out people from rating if you haven't played the game. That's true. Bare yeah, minimum. With Microsoft rewards. Yeah, it says like, oh, you and get also these points. Make, make my rewards. You get ten points every game you rate, regardless of rating or something. You know, something, yeah. something like that. Just get inventive with the rating system. Again, I don't give a shit about any of this because I would never use it. I'm just saying it is. I just feel like fortunate that you have to have a middle guy. Again, if I go on the store and say mm. I want to buy a video game. Let's check the new releases. I don't fucking know what's good. I have no bo- idea. Yeah, it just always bothers me because, like, I've always been the guy that tries any game. Like, hell, I was really about to try it. But, yeah, like, but it's I actually cool. It, I do but, like, I don't know if I should waste my time on it. Yeah. I, I want to try it because it's a PS5 game, but. Is there such thing as a bad PS5 game yet? Should there be? It's a, I mean, it's a yeah. new gen. So should I don't there know. be? Should there be objectively bad video games? And should we say yeah. that? I don't know. That's why it's important to check out Easy Achievers every single week because we'll tell you what we think about any game you're talking to us about. But again, we do. I I do love having these conversations. Should moderation be on the platform? What do you guys think? Tweet at us your thoughts or leave a comment below. We answer again every single comment. Down below, I was trying to find Achievers, a game that I saw on Twitter, and I stupidly did not save it, so I apologize. Mm, but okay. it basically, it was showing off a 1v1 sword fighting game, which looked really cool. Interesting. Um, and I wanted to bring it to you all, and I guess I just, I just, I just didn't hit save. I thought I did. Um, I was just gonna show you guys like how cool this looked, but I can't find it. Oh, 
thing. I found it. <laughs> I was gonna say, as you're looking for it, I was going to say, I, update I found... the life of my daughter. She's just rolling everywhere. <laughs> Dar- let me know if you need to go. Uh, Die by you're the good. Blade is the new sword fighting game with one hit kills. This is via Game Whoa. Rant. Um, let me see if I can find... There was a trailer Die for this. this. Yeah, this game looks... It, what system is it on? All of it? Everything? I, I don't know. I will check for you. Let's see. I'll type in Xbox. Is it in black in like red letters and kind of looks like blood? Should, yeah, I think so. Die by Blade coming to PC and consoles in 2022. Yeah, Achievers, it is on the screen right now. Um, oh, this is not gameplay. Sorry. What? Oh, no, no, no. It's at the end here. Okay. So we can just watch this, this very quickly. Gameplay. So yeah, it, 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 it's a 1v1. It looks like you do some sort of input to kind of... Oh, they look like clay animation almost. It's kind of weird. Interesting. Uh, oh, okay. This is the, it looks like this is the actual gameplay achievers. Uh, so yeah, it looks a lot like, uh, like Mortal Kombat Tekken-esque. But instead of that, it's, it's sword fighting and you have to... Uh, you know what this reminds me of, Alex? No one's going to know mm. this. Deadliest Warrior, the video game from oh on Xbox God. 360, 360 Arcade. Yes. <laughs> That's what it I reminds me of. It. Because the Deadliest Warrior was like you died in like oh five seconds. God. You died in like yeah. five seconds in that video game. They didn't show you much. Sorry, Jeevers. I thought that was way more. Uh, but yeah, coming 2022, Steam, PS5, PS4, Series X, S, Xbox One, Switch. Made Again. By sh- made by... Moderation. <laughs> is this going to be fun? Is good? Yeah. Should, should, should there be a thing? Who knows? I, I can't answer that. Just listen to us all the time, and you'll be fine. Yep, we have good taste. No one else does, though. Thank you so much for listening to this hour and sixteen minute podcast. We really appreciate you. you've made it this long. Thank you so much. Remember, you know where to go. But if you need a reminder, Patreon.com is how we keep this going. This keeps the mice on, the lights on, Alex's dogs fed. You may have seen them walking around. They are the cutest little things I've ever seen in my entire life. Um, and they require pets. Alex gives one pet. Every month per dollar on Patreon. So you go over there, give one dollar. That's one pet. Alex will give to each dog. Alex, how many dogs is that? Four. Four pets a day. If you get a dollar. I can math. I can math. <laughs> <laughs> so if you get up to ten dollars, that means Alex has to pet his dog each time 40 times times four. That is 160 pets. Okay, how high can we get this? How many times can we make Alex pet? Will I make him video look, it and put it on our YouTube channel? <laughs> look, I'll even I as we're talk, I'll even as we're talking, I'll pet one here, oh, and they can count. just look. Yeah, you count. Yeah, yeah. I'll talk. Multitask. I'll talk, multitask. I'll just sit there, like like Doctor Evil. I'll just be petting. We come up with such good ideas, achievers. Thank you so much for listening. Again, if you like this, give it a like, comment below. Let us know what you think of the show. Again, question, comments, concerns, thoughts, and ideas. Direct that to either the comments below or Patreon DM service for direct chats as to not only the show, but to us. We thank you so, we thank you so much. Alex is grabbing one of his animals. Oh my god, that poor thing looks like what are you doing to me? <laughs> Very cute. Sorry, audio listeners, if you don't see this, but there's an adorable puppy on the screen now. Ew. <laughs> no you can't give it away for free they haven't done it yet i, I had to do <laughs> this is the demo hey, this is the demo hey, it's like look, this could look, be look, you look three for free there you go it's a discount mm-hmm. <laughs> maybe we'll do buy buy one pet get a pet free months <laughs> we're so stupid thank <laughs> you so much everyone we will see you next week and uh we will have our halo infinite thoughts I'm so excited for a big team battle, man. Monday or Tuesday. Stay tuned to my Twitter. Mm. Um, if I if it seems like it's late, please let me know, and I'll give you an update. I will update. be snipping them snipes. Yes, he will be snip sniping on big team battle. But until then, <laughs> achievers, don't forget. Go achieve. Go achieve.